I know I'm a little bit late with this video, but here are my top 10 fragrances for summer 2021. We'll be going bottom up 10 to 1. And I actually show my bottles for once. I never show my bottles in my video for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I have seven of these. So I own seven out of 10 of these. I'll be at least getting a few more down the road. We'll see, you know, as time goes on. But I'm going to start with number 10, which is Un Jardin Apres La Mousson by Hermes. Ginger cantaloupe, but that's what this smells like to me. There's a nice aquatic touch too, which works well for a hot rainy day. This fragrance is super nice. It's very refreshing. It's actually my work work scent. I don't like classifying fragrances as such, but I bought this for work essentially. Um, it's really good. I'm not gonna give big, you know, big long diatribes on these fragrances because I'm gonna review them all if I haven't already. So just a little little recaps. But yes, ten Unjardin Apres La Mousson by Hermès. Nine, this is one I don't own, but I have reviewed and I have a decant of, Sea Island by Royal Crown. So if you saw my review of that, I like it more now than I did then. When I re initially reviewed it, I wasn't crazy about the dry down, but the dry down really grown on me. So this is like if you took Summerin by Healy and mixed it with Vanilla Vibes by Juliet Has a Gun. It's wonderfully aquatic with a nice rounded base. It's definitely transformative, which is nice. You know, it goes from almost like a Selmarin-like opening into something that's more, I wouldn't say resinous, but a little balsamic, yeah, sort of, the, the reaching, that stretching, definitely gets a little vanilla-like in the base. A little bit of a sweet edge to it, if you will. <laughs> Number eight is going to be Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. It's this, it's fresh, it's clean, it's quality. It takes the 4711 DNA and raises it to an extremely high bar. To me, this right here is the idea of basic done well in a bottle. It's nothing that special smell-wise, but it's just basic done really well. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a nice scent. It's not one that I like as much as when I reviewed it initially. It's grown off me a little bit, but it's still top tier. Definitely my favorite of the Tom Ford summer fragrances. Really nice. Norley Portofino. Number seven. This is the second one that I do not own. Riviera Drive by Atelier d'Azur. This is an simply a summery, sum, <laughs> summery aromatic fragrance done extremely well. The absinthe in here gives it a nice twist and this helps to keep things exciting. The, I have a decan of this. This was a new acquisition for me so I'm still getting used to it a little bit but I want to put it in here because I feel like it deserves its spot on this list. I'll probably be getting a bottle of this sometime within the next year, so by summer 2022 I should have a bottle of this if I still think oh so highly of it, but we'll see. Very, very, very good fragrance. So my number six, and this was an upset because I was almost sold on this being my number one, but it's actually grown off me in the past few weeks a little bit. I'm not sure why, hope, I'm hoping it, you know, goes back to its glory, if you will. But it's gonna be Millicene Imperial from Creed. It is amazing. You know, I'm not gonna take anything away from this. This is still one of the best fragrances I've smelled, period. It's wonderful in high heat, and for me, date situations, this is my girlfriend's favorite scent on me as of now. And it pairs with work really well. It's fruity and marine while remaining unique. People say, oh, it smells like a salted watermelon on the beach. Sure, if you wanna say that, then fine. It kinda does. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, my one issue with this fragrance is sometimes, and especially in the opening, it can come off a little, not screechy, but plasticky. And that's something that I'm having an issue with right now, and I didn't have an issue with it before. So I'm not sure if it's just something in the humidity, my skin, or what have you. But it's very good. Still top tier, still in my top four Creed fragrances. Very nice. Six, Millicene Imperial. Five, it's the last one I don't have. Recently, recently reviewed this. I really, really enjoy this and will absolutely be buying a bottle probably by the end of this year. It's Zest de Gingembre by Healy. It's ginger ale in a bottle with all the pop you can imagine. It's so much fun, and I can't wait to get a bottle of this. 
I just reviewed it. If you want to see what my full thoughts, go ahead and watch that review. It's a short one. Number four. This is this brand's second entry on this list. This is going to be Virgin Island Water by Creed. It's extremely, and I mean like to a T, reminiscent of the Malibu Splash Coconut Lime drink. It is exactly like that. It's kind of weird how similar it is actually. But I mean, this can be equated to anything that's slightly boozy and centered around lime and coconut. This is my favorite Creed Summer fragrance. I mean, clearly, it's, <laughs> I already said that, but it's just, it does this like no other. It's probably my second favorite Creed, second or third favorite Creed fragrance overall. And I mean, it's really just the best pick me up. The opening just so bright. And I don't mind overspraying with this, you know. I feel like people rag and say, oh, you need to spray 20 sprays with this. I've done 20 sprays with this. You don't need 20. A good eight. And eight's fine. I go eight sprays. And yeah, it's expensive, but I mean, when you're dealing with niche, I mean, you can pick this up for like 180 to 200. It's not that bad. And I mean, I've had this, I've only had this for, you know, one summer season. And I wore it quite a bit. And it's all, that's a dent I made. So this will still last me, I'm saying another four or five years at least. This is a great one though. Virgin Island Water by Creed at number four. Number three, and this is what took the video so long to make because I was thinking about placing an order for this and was going back and forth, but I decided I had to. My number three fragrance on this list is Salted Green Mango by Strangers Perfumery. It's traditionally a modern, mature yet youthful. This fragrance straddles the line perfectly and is truly an all occasion masterpiece for the summer. Its name describes the scent perfectly, yet there are so many surprises to be found within. Prin knocked this out of the park. This Salted Green Mango almost takes this to a whole other level. I feel like he kind of washed Creed in their own game. Um, and I'm going to have a full review of this coming out very soon, probably within the next week. So I'm not going to get too much into it, but it's, it's incredible. I, thankfully, I was put onto this by the Fragrance Apprentice, you know, a year or two ago. And ever since then, it's just it blows me away. Salted Green Mango by Strangers at number three. So now we're getting into the top two. These are both 10 out of 10 fragrances for me. I think these are both amazing. They'll get their own reviews eventually. Um, number two is going to be Tuca Tatao by House of Matriarch. Let me get that in the camera. Tropical fruits done to the absolute max. This is a wonderfully challenging fruity scent that References aquatics, florals, a million different things. And even oud, I believe that's a listed note in here as well. The scent genuinely baffles me every time I smell it. It is quite exotic. It's almost like suffocating in the best way, if that makes any sense. It's dense, but it works so well. I wouldn't say in high heat, but... And high heat subjective, you know, if you live up north, 80s probably high heat to you. I'm here in beachside Florida. I'm talking like I wouldn't wear this in 90, 90 plus Fahrenheit, but anything below it, this is just amazing. It's very exotic in the best way. It almost has this like bubble gummy accord too. Not in like your typical Invictus way, but almost like my number one, which we're going to hear about in a second. Um, but this will get its own review when I'm ready. I still have more discovering to do with this fragrance. You know, I've worn it a bunch, but there's so many different like, meticulous facets to this that I want to get my legitimate, you know, full opinion on this for I record a video. And that might take time, but it's fine. So number two, Tuca Tatao by House of Matriarch. Number one, this came by abs an absolute surprise. I was at Sephora one day and I was like, oh, there's a sample set for this brand. I thought, you know, it was on marketing hype, what have you. I heard, you know, heard hype for this on the fragrance or fragrance community. I saw the bottle. I was like, oh, that's really pretty. I hope I like this fragrance. I saw it and I was like, you know, it's decent. It's good. You know, it's 
my probably my second favorite out of the seven or however come in the sample pack. Um, but there's something that, like got my attention. I was like, you know, what? I want to smell this. I want to smell this. I want to smell this again. So I just kept on going back to my sample until I used it. And then the last on my last wearing of that sample, I was like, holy smokes, this is the real deal. This is me in a bottle. I love it. And my number one for summer of 2021 is going to be a Vanilla Vibes by Juliet Has a Gun. I'll be doing a review on this soon. I haven't written one yet, but there will be one on this soon. Um, this is a fantastic breezy vanilla scent. Think of sandy and salty vanilla. It's wonderfully effervescent. It works extremely well in the heat. What you're thinking, a vanilla fragrance in 90 degree heat, how is that going to happen? It happens really well. You know, you're going to spray this on, and it gives almost a sunscreen vibe, but it's the best sunscreen you've ever had. Like, it's the, I'm going to say the La Mer of <laughs> sunscreens. I don't know if they make a sunscreen. That was a bad, <laughs> forget that, <laughs> but Vanilla Vibes is amazing. Vanilla Vibes is so evocative. Evocative what? I don't even know. It's just evocative. It's youthful. It reminds me of the best times of my life up to now. Being that I live, you know, <laughs> by, <laughs> by a beach. It just, it leaves me lost for words. And I just can't wait to get a review out on this, really. This took me by absolute surprise and is my number one fragrance for the summer of 2021. Vanilla Vibes. Thank you guys for watching. I don't do these lists very often. Like all my videos, I'm not sure if I've said it before, I have, you know, loose scripts that I read off of. Uh, so sorry if this ran a little long. It kind of went on 10 different tangents. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you want. Um, if you have any requests, you can email me at fragrantprep at gmail.com. Shoot me a DM on Instagram or leave a comment below. And thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. Bye.